All right, welcome to the Crafty Casa. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Today I'm bringing you guys this beautiful dress of transformation that I will be turning into a console table, sofa table, or entry table, whatever you want to use it for. I think it's functional in any area of the house. I got this dresser for free in offer up. I know, unbelievable. Wonderful couple that gave it to me, and I can't wait to show you guys how I did this transformation. So, we're going to start out by removing the railing from the dressers first. My husband's helping me out here. Uh, and he first removed, like I said, the railing from here. And then he's actually going to start cutting out the bottom two rows of the wooden frame that was holding in the drawers or the dressers, whatever you call them. And he's going to be using his little skill saw here just to cut those off. All right, and then he went ahead and removed the back frame too. Those wood, those pieces of wood back there, he removed those too. And then he's using a little chisel here and his hammer to kind of smooth out the uh, surface of the places where he cut out the, um, the framing from. And then just removing the little pieces of metal that were stuck to the dresser itself too. And this is what it looks like without the framing and the railing. So go ahead and get your measurements. Uh, we were going to use just like regular wood, but then we realized we had this pallet. So we ended up using three pieces of wood from this pallet. He removed the nails and he uh, took the measurements, cut out the corners and all of that. And then he used this handy saw here to cut it to the proper um, size. And then he, of course, gave it a good sanding because if you've touched pallet wood, it is awful and rough. So you definitely need to smooth that down with uh, some sanding paper. Um, he is going to nail it down at this point, but later on I will remove it when I get painting because I ended up deciding to keep it the uh, wood color that it is because it was just standing out beautifully with the white ivory paint that I used. So I removed it because it was going to be easier to paint it that way and we did leave a little bit of space in between the um the, the piece of wood just because i thought it looked more sticky that way and here i'm just going to give it a quick little sanding with like a 60 grit uh sanding paper just to remove some of the oils and the shine and the paint will adhere better and this is the very first coat of paint i'm giving it it's just like an ivory paint it's a pre-mixed paint from walmart it was only like $15 and I will definitely be linking that for you guys down in the description box. So do not worry, I got it for you. And uh, it turned out really good. It's just regular flat paint in case you were wondering. And I'm gonna paint the inner side of the dresser. Uh, I even painted the top, the sides, and the back. And this is what the dresser looks like with one coat of paint. Obviously you need more than one. I ended up doing two coats of paint. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the mess in this garage, but we've been doing a lot of work in here, so please don't judge me. I promise it looks decent when we clean it up. Uh, now, I'm giving it the second coat right now. Make sure you wait till the paint is completely dry in between your coats, because if you don't wait, 
you will mess it up. So <laughs> just wait till it's fully dry. It took about 45 minutes for this paint to completely dry and since it's matte or flat paint, it dries pretty quickly. So um, like I said, 40, 45 minutes and it was pretty dry. Uh, and this is what it looks like with the second coat of paint. And here, I'm actually going to start distressing this now console table <laughs> uh, with uh, some sanding paper. If I'm not wrong, this is an 80 grit sanding paper. And then I actually switched off to a 100, yeah, 180, 100 grit sanding paper once I started getting to the wood itself on some areas just because I didn't want it to look scratchy. Here on the edges, an 80 grit spine. Uh, just always focus on areas that would naturally be distressed. Anything, any features that stand out or, like I said, that would naturally be distressed, you focus on those. And then once you start seeing um, like brown or the uh, natural wood color peeking through, that's, that's when you know you're, you're getting a good distress mark. Um, this is when I started switching back and forth between different sanding papers because I was do I did want to distress the top of the dresser too so I would uh, I would sand it until I almost saw the wood color and then once I saw a little bit of the wooden color then I would switch off to the 100 grit which is softer than the 80 grit to kind of not make it scratchy I hope it makes sense but if you've done this before you know that when you use a rougher grit it, it leaves like scratches on the um, on the furniture piece, so that's why I would switch off to the 100 grit to soften it up. And this is once it was done. Uh, like I said, we distressed everything everywhere, the dressers and uh, the dresser itself, and it turned out beautiful. Beautiful. You could definitely do more, do less, however you want to do it. You can definitely personalize this. We kept the hardware, the color that it was. It just looks darker now, but it's beautiful. And as you can see, I left the palette with the color that it is, and I feel like it just gave it a whole lot more of a rustic a farmhouse vibe. So I really, really like the way it looked. My husband wanted to stain it, but I was like, you know what? No, I like the way it is as it is. And this is what it looks like once it was in the living room. I gave you guys here a little decorated view of it. I finally got to use my two lamps and I just started grabbing stuff from around the house so you could see it, at least an idea of how you could decorate your own once you you go ahead and go for it. <laughs> if you've been thinking about changing up your old furniture piece, don't hesitate. It, they're always turned out beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and as always, don't forget to go and follow me on Instagram at the Crafty Casa 2018 and go and like my Facebook page at the Crafty Casa. As always, I love you guys so so much. Thank you so much for the support. Have an awesome weekend, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.